In a high-stakes battle over evidence, Karen Reed's defense team claims that prosecution is withholding key information that could prove her innocence. In this dramatic case, let's dive deep into the court's decision on surveillance footage, DNA analysis, and conflicting testimonies. First, the defense demanded access to surveillance footage from Google Nest, ABC, NBC, and other sources, arguing that this video could be the key to Reed's innocence. They believe the footage contains exculpatory evidence that the prosecution hasn't shared. The judge responded by setting firm compliance dates for evidence release, putting pressure on the prosecution to produce the requested footage. Then there's the forensic hair analysis dispute. Initially, the prosecution identified a hair found on Reed's vehicle as human, but later tests revealed no human DNA. The defense claimed this hair was misidentified, challenging the reliability of the forensic analysis. The prosecution, however, argued that the sample was too small for a conclusive result and requested further testing. In response, the defense insisted on microscopic analysis first, pointing to potential issues with the initial assessment. Next, let's talk about the taillight fragments. The prosecution says fragments at the scene matched Reed's vehicle, making her presence undeniable. However, the defense questioned the chain of evidence, arguing that mishandling or contamination could be at play. It also raised concerns about potential conflicts of interest with Trooper Proctor, who has connections with another party involved in the case. The judge ordered the evidence reviewed and set strict deadlines for further forensic testing. Finally, witness testimonies directly challenged the prosecution's timeline. A plow driver reported seeing no body at the scene around 2.30 a.m. conflicting with the prosecution's timeline. Plus, the driver saw a Ford Edge parked nearby, potentially implicating another suspect. And there's more. The defense pointed to a Google search made by witness Jennifer McCabe at 2.27 a.m. asking how long to die in cold. They argue this shows foreknowledge or even complicity. The prosecution fired back, stating McCabe searched this at Reed's request with digital forensics to back it up. In the end, the judge issued clear rulings. First, the prosecution must release all requested evidence by November 3rd. Next, non-evidentiary motions are due by November 6th, with evidentiary motions set for January 5th. This case will have one final pretrial hearing on February 26th, and if everything proceeds on schedule, the trial is set to begin March 12th. As for Reed's bail, her defense team requested a reduction, arguing her financial difficulties and the strength of new evidence make her a low flight risk. However, the judge asked for a complete affidavit on Reed's finances before making a decision. Meanwhile, the prosecution stands firm, insisting the bail stay as is or include conditions like an alcohol monitor if reduced. So, what does this mean for Reed? Her defense team remains relentless in challenging the evidence, the timeline, and the witness accounts presented by the prosecution. Both sides are gearing up for a complex trial where every piece of evidence will be scrutinized. I'll keep you updated as this courtroom battle unfolds. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, so let me know what you think. And if you're interested in even more updates, don't forget to turn on the notification bell. See you in the next one. I'm very curious to hear your responses. Let me know in the comments below. I look forward to bringing you more in the near future. Keep a lookout for my next case. Thank you to my producer, Suzy Q, for all her hard work gathering case info. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell.
Bye, y'all.